Hello friends, now we will start with the module 3 of radar engineering that is MTI and pulse Doppler radar. So first topic under this is introduction to Doppler and MTI radar. Uh, already we know that radar can detect in the previous modules we have seen that radar can detect uh, uh, stationary objects. So in spite of uh, clutter, clutter is nothing but the unwanted unwanted uh, targets that is like natural uh, environment such as land, sea and weather. Now so apart from this radar can also detect the aircraft. So normal radars cannot detect the uh, detect the aircrafts which are moving. Now so the most powerful method for detecting the moving targets targets in the midst of in the mid of uh, clutter is nothing but it uses a uh, uh, Doppler effect so which is the which is nothing but the change of frequency of the radar echo signal due to the relative velocity between the radar and the moving target so the use of Doppler frequency shift with the pulse radar for the detection of moving targets in clutter is the subject of this chapter now here so there are here we are going to discuss about MTI and pulse radar that is, uh, as I said you, we are going to use the Doppler effect. That is, what, how much ever the Doppler frequency shift has taken place, relative, uh, relative to the, relative to the, uh, where we, uh, relative to the radar. So here in the pulse Doppler radar, so we are, uh, we are going to calculate only about the uh, frequency shift. That is, how much frequency shift has happened, and in the MTI radar. So we are going to calculate the phase shift that is how much phase shift has happened in the received echo signal due to the moving target. So this is a difference between pulse radar and MTI radar. Now uh, so, uh, so first we will uh, talk about what is the MTI radar that is what is the basic principle between uh, in the um, basic principle in MTI radar and pulse Doppler radar. So pulse Doppler radar that uses Doppler shift is either MTI or pulse Doppler radar. So in both the cases we are going to use pulse as a transmitted signal. So if we are using continuous wave for uh, uh, detecting the moving target it is known as continuous wave radar. Now as we all know that uh, according to the pulse repetition frequency we have to uh, keep the pulse repetition frequency low to detect the target so that uh, a target will not be beyond the uh, range ambiguities it should not be under the range ambiguities that is so what what is a uh, rm unambiguous we have seen it is equal to c by fp so the maximum range beyond which the target cannot be detected is given by r unambiguous that is equal to c by fp so it depends on the pulse repetition frequency now here uh, so uh, we have now we will discuss about what is this Doppler frequency shift. So it is same as what we have seen in your in our school days that is if the target is moving towards the object towards us then uh, then the Doppler frequency the frequency of whatever we are receiving received signal is more if the target is going away the frequency is, is decreasing. Now, so if if I say that if I say that uh, if I say that the range of the target is R, then total number of wavelengths lambda in two-way path is it will be equal to two R by lambda. That is one lambda is nothing but distance between the two crusts or two troughs. Therefore, how much is the total number of wavelengths between the radar? to the target and from the target to the radar it will be equal to 2r by lambda now each wavelength corresponds to that is each wavelength will be having a phase shift of 2 pi radians so uh, how much phase shift has taken between the between the uh, transmitted signal from the radar to the target and target to the radar so it will be total phase shift phase shift is equal to 2 pi into 2 r by lambda that is equal to 4 pi r by lambda. Now what is uh, what is the 
now uh, here this is with respect to if the target is stationary now if the target is moving kind so obviously there will be a change in the face so what is the change in the face change in the face is equal to it is simply d phi by dt with respect to time so that is change in the face with respect to time is simply as we all know it is nothing but your angular frequency angular frequency is nothing but rate of change of face of a sinusoidal wave that is equal to d phi by dt so when you just take the integration of the equation you get is it get it as 4 pi vr by lambda that is equal to 2 pi fd fd indicates the how much the frequency shift has happened doppler frequency vr is nothing but the radial velocity vr indicates the vr what is vr vr is nothing but the it is the it, it is nothing but uh, the direction in which the target is moving so here uh, we can say that vr is the that component of uh, that component of the velocity of the target so which is joining the target and the radar so it is equal to vr will be equal to simply v cos theta so as shown in the figure so you can see here here uh, here uh, the velocity the uh, the target is moving in this way and the radar is at this point now if we resolve this velocity vector in two components so this is one component and this is one more component so so two perpendicular components so whatever the component is coming towards the radar towards the radar is equal to vr v cos theta now here so what is the angular frequency shift it is equal to simply 2 pi fd that is equal to 2 vr by lambda so here uh, what we have done uh, so fd is equal to 2 ft into vr we can also write it as lambda lambda is equal to c by f c by ft that is ft is equal to your transmitted signal frequency so i can write uh, fd in terms of in terms of vr and lambda so vr in terms of knots knots is one more unit of velocity so we have written it as 1.03 vr by lambda uh, so he, uh, here apart from so we can say that uh, this continuous if you are using continuous wave radar it is it just not only detects the uh, moving target and measure its radial velocity but it, it is also uh, it is also uh, helping us to produce the images of the target and some metrological radars can measure the wind shear that is wind speed so now here next is uh, we will talk about the block diagram of a simple continuous wave doppler radar so sim simple continuous wave so he in this way in this uh, block diagram we are using the continuous wave transmitter not a pulse wave that is we are not using pulse we are using a continuous sine wave so here there is no need of any modulator and all it is directly transmitted that is uh, whatever the signal is trans, uh, signal is generated by the transmitter the signal frequency is ft that is directly transmitted towards the target so continuous wave trans it is transmitted while it so whatever the con continuous wave transmitter we have used whatever the radar we are using here it is transmitting while it is receiving so both the work it is doing simultaneously so now filtering is used here to separate the to separate the weak doppler uh, shifted echo signal from uh, from the sto st strong transmitted signal in continuous wave radar that is we are using the ft as a reference signal that is we are using this ft so that it can be ft can be compared with the received signal and whatever the change whatever the change has happened in the receive uh, in the transmitted signal that is fd can be can be determined here so after doppler filter we are uh, we are after the block doppler filter we are using the fd that we are getting the uh, how much ever the frequency shift has happened 